Hi everybody, it's Christopher Naiman. Well, what you're looking at is just a little tiny bit of my metallic thread collection. Guess what we're going to do today? I'm going to teach you how to do free motion embroidery on a sewing machine. You don't have to have a special sewing machine that is an automatic embroidery. You can use a zigzag machine that is mechanical all the way up to a high-end sewing machine. Now this, is, this video is part one of several videos I'll be putting out um, teaching you how to do uh, free motion embroidery, how to work with specialty threads, how to work with standard threads, um, doing all kinds of creative work. And what I want you to know is that you can do it. You can absolutely do it. And we're going to have fun doing it. Now, how many of you have seen on the runway all those beautiful and gold metallic embroidery on those fashion designers garments on um, that baroque look in embroidery well i'm going to show you how to begin take you in the beginning and how to get that look on your garments now hey you might want to make a, a special art wall hanging too and do it on but everyone's making so many garments today and i've noticed on um, among my facebook groups and yahoo groups and a lot of people just have your basic beginner sewing machines. A lot of people do not have an automatic embroidery machine. So remember, that does not mean you cannot get a high-end result. What you just need to know are the methods, the techniques, and the most important thing is the setup. So, welcome to Free Motion Machine Embroidery Part 1. Welcome back. Okay, so what we're going to do is, let's pretend that you're going to be creating a garment. And this is your pattern. Let's pretend this is your pattern here, okay? What you're gonna do is you're going to lay your pattern down on your fabric. Now, one of the cool things about gold metallic thread and what you see on the, on the fashion runways is they're doing it on black or very dark material. And that's how it's gonna show up really, really well. So what I, would, what I would say to you is, lay your pattern down on your fabric. And if it's, this is a garment fabric, you know, garment sewers always pre-wash your fabric because some fabric may have a sizing in it. What that means is it's kind of starched to make it kind of stiff or firm. And when you wash it, all that will come out and it'll shrink. So if there's any shrinkage, it'll all come out in the wash. So you're going to lay your pattern down. And what I would suggest you do is just cut out um, the fabric a little larger than the pattern piece. And then you're working with the pattern. Now, what you want to do is, let's just say you're going to be, um, after you cut that out, lay your pattern down and then outline it with chalk. So you know, get a relatively uh, good area where, where you want to put this. So I would, for example, if this is the front of a jacket or whatever, and you want to do a little embroidery like right here, just say a little embroidery, okay? So you would mark that there because that's where you're going to embroider. Now, let's just say this is the piece of fabric that you're going to be embroidering on. Now, let's talk about hoops. There are special wooden embroidery hoops for free motion machine embroidery. Now, here's a photo I'm going to show you of uh, hoops not to use for this technique. And the reason is because we're going to be uh, laying down so much thread and building up so much thread that you have to have a hoop, the wooden embroidery hoop, that's going to be very, very snug. It has to be very, very snug when you put this in there, okay? And what I did was, and this has been taught for many, many years, I learned free motion embroidery, gosh, I'd have to say in the early, very beginning of the 90s when I first bought my mechanical sewing machine, I learned it. And um, you what you do is you get some twill tape, some cotton twill tape, and you wrap it on the inside ring around this. Why, why do people do this? Because when you go to hoop your fabric, it'll give you a tighter grip. It's very, very important that you have that tight grip. So let's just start with this, okay? Now, also, you may want to use some um, stabilizer. And here's a wash away stabilizer, okay? I'm gonna use two layers. What happens is after you get done embroidering, because this is gonna be on the back of your fabric, What's happening is after you get done embroidering, you're gonna cut it away, cut the mo whatever you can away, and then you're gonna put your fabric in water, or you can you know, put your whole fabric, your whole garment together, and then wash the whole thing. This will dissolve, and this will come away. But this gives you extra stability, okay? Because like I said, we're gonna be doing a heavy buildup of thread. So then you're gonna take your fabric, and you're gonna put it 
in your hoop and you're going to have your design drawn. You're going to take your outer hoop, you're going to lay it in there and make sure you unscrew it so you have enough to push in there. And then with the palms of your hands, you're going to push down. Okay? After you push it down, okay, after you push it down, then you're going to what we do call burping it. You're going to push, push on the out. You hear that how tight that's getting now? Burp it so it comes that the inner hoop comes peeking out a little bit underneath. Okay, you're going to do that around the whole embroidery hoop, and this is pretty tight. I had this pretty tight earlier, but if it's still not tight enough, what you'll do is then you go and get a screwdriver and you tighten this right here with the screw. Okay, your ho your your hoop fabric should sound like a drum. That's how tight it has to be. Okay, so that's how, that's what you're going to do to get uh, begin with your free motion embroidery. All right, so um, if you want to review this video right now, please rewind and review this. Um, before you start any of this project, uh, be sure that you watch the video, turn your volume up and listen. Everything you're going to need to know to begin this first project is in here. I would like to see you do this first project in practice and you'll see my, what I'm going to take you through. This video is part one. I'm going to be doing other videos and we'll be using other types of threads and different types of sewing machines. So you all know that you can do this, okay? Uh, this is my way of giving back to you all for supporting me and buying my books and uh, coming to my classes um, out there on the road. So you, you've helped me stay in this industry and you will continue to help me stay in this industry by continuing to buy my books and I really appreciate it. I'm going to give you everything that I've learned that gets me the professional results of what I do. So why don't we uh, move on from here and begin and look at what we're going to need at the sewing machine. So now let's talk about the accessories are going to need, or the notions is what they call them, to do our free motion embroidery. So as you can see, I'm going to use these two different types of metallic threads, and these are by Sulky. I have a variegated color here, and I have a solid color here. Yes, we're going to use both those threads through the eye of one needle. It's going to be cool. And then we're going to use a metallic needle. I'm using a size 14. And for my bobbin, my machine loves finishing touch bobbin thread. I use this for my um, automatic embroidery. I use it for my um, manual embroidery and it's just a wonderful, wonderful thread. So if you're having problems with embroidery, um, check your machine and see the manufacturer what specific brand of bobbin thread they suggest. And then we're gonna use a white pencil to mark our fabric so we can draw our design on there. Over here in my settings, we're going to start with a zigzag stitch. And what we're going to do is the settings on it is, first of all, our feed dogs are dropped. My, my machine have an icon. In your machine, you may have a lever uh, somewhere down within the machine underneath this table. You may have a lever that's going to drop your feed dogs. These are called feed dogs right here. And what these do is when you drop the feed dogs, you are in control of the fabric, so you'll be moving the fabric on your own, okay? And if you notice on there, I also have a special um, foot, and that foot is a, a free motion embroidery foot. Now, some people like to thread, I'm sorry, some people like to sew uh, with a bare needle. I like the, the foot to hold down the fabric for any extra grip. Now, here's the other thing, too. It helps keep your fingers away, okay? All right, so my going back to my setup here, uh, the width is a 6.0. You don't have to worry about the length because your, your, your feed dogs are dropped. And the tension is 3.0. And then on the setup, as you can see up here, I have my two spools of thread on my special Tacconi thread tower. And watch my metallic thread video tips on how, to do, how that's all set up. And then there, you see my two threads coming through there. And we're in, threaded through the needle. Okay, now would you like to watch that needle get threaded? Here, let me pull them out. Let's see where that, can't even feel them. Where are my threads? Here they are. Here's one. I'll grab the other one. All right, there's two. Okay, now we're going to thread this. I want you to watch how this threads through both needles. Are you ready? Here we go. Never miss needle threader. My threads are there they are, see? Both of them are pulled right through. How about that, huh? Okay, so that's the setup on that. Now, 
um, as I talk about in all my classes, an extension table. You see that? You have to have an extension table for proper sewing ergonomics. And that includes for sewing, free motion work. You have to have room for your arms to lay up here, your elbows to sit properly. You know, so many times we'll see videos on YouTube. <clears throat> no one's using an extension table. And they're sewing what we call in the industry, and please don't take offense to this, but this is a term in the industry, housewife sewing. It's not being taught professionally. Now, if you're going to a sewing class and you're paying money to attend that class, and that teacher doesn't even have proper ergonomics being shown on her, his or her sewing machine, um, you know, you ought to ask for your money back because it's about paying money to learn professional sewing so you have professional results. Even though you may just be home sewing, you want to learn to get professional results. I mean, come on, look at this machine. Does this machine look cheap? So why are they going to cheap? Why are they going to teach cheap techniques on a very expensive sewing machine? Now you convert those techniques to a basic mechanical machine and you become a pro. Okay? So yeah, look at this machine. This is a car. This is a car payment. This is how much a car costs. And they want to sell you these machines so they better teach you proper techniques, methods, ergonomics in those sewing classes. Because that's what I do when I teach and my students have results. If you watch all my videos when I'm on the road, all my students have results and guess what? They finish their projects too. Okay? So that's our setup. So now let's clear this up and let me draw some designs to show you our first embroidery design technique. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to move the fabric. One of the things that we have to understand is that when we're going to do free motion work, we are in charge of moving this hoop. And I want to stress to you how to do this. Your arms are up on your extension table. You're sitting close to your machine. And we're going to sew at a medium speed. So if you've got a speed control, set it to half. If you don't and you just use your foot pedal, make sure that you're sewing halfway because that's metallic threads. With metallic threads you've got to sew uh, half speed. Okay? We're going to hold our hoop like this with our hands and we're going to move. We move back and forth, side to side, around in a circle. This is how we're going to move the hoop. So this is very, very important. Now what I'd like you to do to practice is just move like this. Just practice. Be consistent. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go like this. You don't want to go like that. You got to remember the repetition of the needle is going at a certain speed and you have to move with that repetition of the needle. So it takes a little practice to get the feeling. It's like driving a new car. Um, after a while, you'll get to know when you're on the road what's feeling right, what's not feeling right in your car. Think of that scenario, that whole analogy, when you're sewing too, like this. It's like driving a car, okay? And take some practice. Do some practice. Put some standard uh, cotton thread with a uh, bobbin thread in the bottom for your bobbin. And just play around and practice before you do the real thing. Remember, the problem we have in home sewing is that everyone wants to do something right away without practicing and they'll do it on the good stuff before they practice on you know the not so good stuff and that's why people get frustrated and give up so always test and my students will tell you I always teach in my classes what do I say test 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 and I write that in my book too okay so let's get going and draw this design on here so we can uh, create our, our first embroidery technique. So let me lift this up here because this is uh, you got to lift it up to get it out under there. Okay? See that? Alright. There we go. Now, the technique, the design I'm going to design is I'm going to do kind of an avant-garde flower. Now, I'm not a real major gardener with knowing names of flowers. I just see things and I create my own little Disney world, so to speak. So I'm going to draw a line here. Okay? By the way, you hear that drum? That's how tight your, your fabric has to be in your embroidery hoop. I cannot stress that enough. And then I'm going to draw another line here. And we'll draw another one up here. Okay, and that's, that's three. You should always do everything in three or off equal number. You should do 
uh, uneven numbers. So that's three, here's four, and then we'll do a five coming out this way, okay? All right, so extend this up a little higher here. Now I'm gonna draw a circle. Draw a circle here. I'll draw a circle here. I'll draw a little circle here. Good depth of field. Remember the depth of field. Look at pictures and paintings. Draw one here, and then we'll draw a little one right here. Okay, that's going to be our flower design that we're going to we're going to embroider. Okay, so let me reset the camera so I can get this closer, so you can watch me embroider. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we want to draw up our bobbin thread. So make sure that your foot is lowered, and then lower your needle. <clears throat> okay, bring your needle back up, and on a, on a manual machine, you'll do it on the side on the flywheel. And this bobbin thread is real fine, so we're going to pull that up. Okay, we're going to pull that bobbin thread up here. This may be hard for you to see, but it's, I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so our bobbin thread is pulled all the way up. Bring these threads underneath and through that foot. So it's, they're all out underneath the foot. Okay. All right, so now we're going to hang on to our bobbin thread and our metallic thread. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to make sure my foot is lowered, always check that. On, if you have a mechanical machine, if you try to sew and your foot is up, like if this is up, on my machine, if I press on my foot pedal and try to sew, it's going to beep at me. I'll let you hear this. Hear that? That means it will not let me sew because it's telling my foot is up. So you have to get into the habit on a mechanical machine to always put your foot, foot down in the back, okay? So now I'm going to lower my foot, and what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the zigzag stitch here and we're going to start following a line and what we're going to do is we're going to stitch over one area at a time multiple times to build a thickness up to this and you'll see what I'm going to do okay so let me just do that here okay all right now let me put my foot down so it stays in my needle down so it stays in place and then I'm going to I'm going to bring that foot back up so I can cut this thread and the bobbin thread. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we're going to stitch. Stitch multiple times in place and then move over. You're going to be building. It's kind of like that old technique in candle wicking. I always refer back to heirloom sewing because heirloom sewing has some really cool techniques. You just want to go a few times over this. You'll get to know. Okay. Move to the next one, build it up, move it over. When this is done, it's going to have like a rope effect to it. Okay, I'm following that line. Now when I get over where I have to move, I have to move more, I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn this way, okay. Following my guideline. It's not difficult. Just take your time doing it. And with traditional free motion embroidery, you're really going to sew fast and move the fabric, move the hoop slow. But here, because we're doing metallic, we're going to be moving much slower. Because metallic thread has a mind of its own. And it can tend to break on you if you don't have your setup right. And sometimes there's just a flaw where it will break. And I've had my metallic thread break on me, so I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you, oh, I never break a thread. But I'd say 99% of the time, I don't have an issue, okay? So let me go and start the next section here. Here we go. What's nice about this, everyone, is, you know, if you don't have an embroidery machine, an automatic embroidery machine, you can do this on your basic machine. They were doing this for years prior to all this modern technology. And I learned this free motion embroidery years ago when I first started to learn how to sew. And I did it on my basic mechanical machine, a $300 mechanical machine. And I was making beautiful works of art. So that's how it was traditionally done. 
So know that you can do this on any machine. You know, if you watch some of those videos on YouTube of some of the countries, they're sewing on a very, really old singer. They're doing embroidery on a very, very old singer. Because those really, really old singers that are, that are mounted inside the table or cabinets, uh, they really work so well. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here to the next stem. And when you see this in photographs, you'll actually you'll absolutely appreciate this. And think about how beautiful this will look on some of your garments. Now, for all you who are doing knit fabrics, I suggest not to do this on knit fabrics. I suggest to do this on woven. So if you advance to more structured um, garments in your sewing and you're ready to move on, uh, I suggest that, you know, do this on structured uh, woven fabrics. You're going to have more success in the beginning that way. You can always embroider on knits, don't get me wrong. But, you know, beginners, take my advice on that. Do it on woven fabrics. This would be great on a shirt. This would be great on a jacket. Um, even if you're doing wall hangings, if you're a quilter and you're doing wall hangings, this is a great technique. And see how nice this is sewing for me. And see how I'm moving the fabric. The hoop. I keep saying fabric. It is fabric, but I'm moving the hoop. Okay, now lift my foot and come down here. And then notice I'm not break. I'm not cutting my threads as I move along. I'm just lifting the foot to release the tension. You have to release your foot to, re to uh, uh, lift your foot to release the tension so you can pull the thread down. Okay, and, and on a mechanical machine, you would lift the, your your presser foot up in the back. Okay, and always remember to put that presser foot down. What happens if you don't put your presser foot down? Is your 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 tension will not be engaged, and you'll get a wad of thread up underneath. Okay. But most of your machines today, um, even your inexpensive computerized machines, will give you that beep if you don't have your foot down. And if you don't have an extension table that came with your machine, uh, you can make one. And I'll give you the link at the, in the description box under this video on YouTube, uh, the link to my, web, my blog on how you can make your own extension table. Very important to have this hoop laying flat. Okay, and that your arms are up here. Very, very important. This is very, this is so much fun. Oh, I hear my computer in the background. I must not get a ton of email every day. It's hard to answer everything. You guys know I'm always on the computer trying to answer, working in the salon between clients, coming home and so I'm working doing these videos and my books and my bags and until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning I do it all over 24-7 this is what I do this is what I absolutely love to do you know for years I spent I think uh, yeah 18 years I spent behind a corporate desk miserable as hell and now I'm doing stuff that absolutely I enjoy doing so much and it is a passion so if you could turn your passion into a business you're gonna have so much pleasure doing it but you have to have control, okay? You have to do something that is going, you're going to have control of where it's not going to consume you to where you, you don't like doing it. You have to love, no matter what it is, you have to love doing it. They say you'll live longer too, so we'll see how old I am. When I, I think my, my grandmother is in her late 90s, so she always had a great passion for life. Okay, so let's see this. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so I'm going to trim my threads and I'll get you a close-up uh, on, the, on, the, on the camera here and some still shots. Okay, so now we're going to move on to doing these little circles. And I set my needle 
into the center needle position for a straight stitch. We're going to do a straight stitch. And remember to uh, reset your tension if you're on a computer machine to uh, 3.0. So we're, now we're going to do a straight stitch with a 3.0. So let's bring up our bobbin thread. Okay, we're going to bring up that bobbin thread. There we go. Why is this thread so fine that it's hard to feel and see? And especially, I'm working with black because it's a black, and when you're doing embroidery, you don't want any white showing on the back. You want your try to match the color of your uh, fabric. Okay. All right. So, and let's now also I want to tell you that keep this in mind. These designs I'm showing you are for small areas in your garment, and this is part one of my video. So we'll be doing some more. Um, I will be doing some more, sorry. I'll be doing some more, so this is just part one, so you'll be able to practice this, and by the time we get to part two video, you'll be advanced for some more. Okay, so let's just make sure our foot is down. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the outline of the circle, and we're gonna be moving in a small circle. That's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna move in a small circle and fill this pattern up. So just let me lock my thread here. Okay, lock my thread, and then uh, needle down, lift my foot, and cut my thread tails here. Okay, needle up, I'm sorry. Okay, so now let's do this. So now I'm going to move in a circle. I'm going to go around this design, and then back half around, and then fill in the inside. We're doing this in a circle, and we still have two threads on here, the two different metallic threads. So I don't know what you're going to call this flower. Maybe it's one of those avant-garde of a take of one of those fuzzy flowers that you remember when you were a kid and that you blew into um, and all the fuzzies went out. You made a wish and you blew. Okay, maybe that's what this is going to be. That type of a, a little flower, but in an avant-garde way. So you see how I'm just moving this in the circle? Okay, I'm going to fill in the middle. And this texture is really cool when it's done. It really has a really neat look to it. So you have your guide because you drew your with a white chalk to follow. And then it's not going to be a perfect circle because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do after I finish filling this in. I love doing this free motion work. You know, I have embroidery machines, automatic embroidery machines, but I always come back to doing this because I, I feel like this keeps you grounded. It gives you you know, a sense of having control. So many people want everything automatic today, and it's great to do the automatic. You get, but I like that raw look. Sometimes, you know, I really like the raw artistic look to designs. And consumers do too. High-end consumers love that artistic look. If it looks like it was done perfectly on a machine, um, it's not valued. It's really not valued. It's just commercial. So, Okay, so now I'm done with that. I pull this out. See how pretty that looks? Now let's go to the next one. Let me fill this in. Fun technique, isn't it? So you'll have lots of time to practice this particular design on your own sewing machine while I produce part two of this because in part two, I'm going to show you how to have continuous designs going all through your garment. And there's a special way we're going to be doing that. But this here is to practice so you'll be able to do a little bit of, of a design on your garment in a small area. It's great practice. Lots of fun. And you can hear the rhythm of my machine. You can hear how the rhythm of my machine is. I'm not like super fast on this. If this was cotton or rayon thread, I'd be going super fast. But because it's metallic thread, and because I have two threads through the needle, you have to sew at a reduced speed. I can't stress that enough. And you have to move in repetition of the needle. You can't move faster than the, than the speed of the needle that's penetrating. If you do, you'll break a needle. So, like I said, I go back to the analogy of um, driving a car.
This is just so nice. Now think about how beautiful this will look. You know, there's nothing prettier than gold thread on black fabric. And the second thread I have in here is a variegated thread. It's kind of a pastel jewel tones. Really, really pretty. And when, you, when I'm done with this flower, um, these flowers when I'm done, you'll get to see close-ups in the photo of how that texture is just unbelievable. So you see I keep moving it around in a circle. Filling all that in. So I hope you stay with me through this series. I'd like to ask you to su subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll get notifications when my new videos come out. In case you, you don't you don't get to see these on the Yahoo groups. Okay, so now I'm going to go out. Bring that out. Okay, now you see what happened. I did that on purpose to show you. When I moved that thread, I stretched it, and then it got all tangled up there. If that happens to you, you'll know why, because I was out of rhythm. So you see those little things like that, what happens. So the thread didn't break, it just came out from underneath. It, didn't, it got uh, messed up with the bobbin because of the way I, I moved it. Okay, so now we're going to have to redo that. I'm going to re-thread all this again. Okay. The one thread did come out of the needle. Boy, this is <laughs> thread so fine it's hard to see. Okay. All right, now, first of all, what I'm going to do is make sure I got this all threaded properly. Everything's through there properly. Okay. And then I'm going to put it through my needle threader. Aren't you glad I did this mistake so you can see what would happen if you did it? Okay. So let's just look underneath to make sure my bobbin thread. Okay, see my bobbin thread is still connected. Probably hard for you to see that in the camera. I'll show you in a second. Okay, let me swing that over here. Okay, all right, let's cut that, make sure. All right, so let's put this back in here. All right, so now I'm going to need to, re to bring up my bobbin thread again because I disconnected it. You want to make sure there's nothing tangled up underneath, okay? It's very important. Okay, so let me bring up my bobbin thread. Pull that bobbin thread up. Let's get all the thread up underneath this foot. Oh, let me get my little scissors here to bring all that thread underneath. There we go. Okay. And what happened to my bobbin thread? Oh, here it is. Okay, there you go. All right, so let's take a couple stitches in place and then cut that thread. Call that a thread tail, okay? All right, so let's continue. Okay, and then I'm gonna start going out. Give it some edge. See how I'm moving the fabric? I'm going out from that circle. Okay. And I'm going to lower my needle and cut this thread tail here. There we go. And let's continue. By the way, on that mistake, you can rewind this video to see how I pulled that to cause that to happen, so you'll know also. Okay? All right, now lift my foot and come down to the next one. There we go. Doing little circle stitches again.
And you know, like I said, if you watch some traditional free motion embroidery, they don't use a foot. But I like to use the foot because it helps hold that fabric down because I'm putting in so much thread. And don't forget, your fabric has to be hooped so it's drum tight. And I guarantee you, you put this gold metallic thread on a black garment that you make. And everybody's going to be looking at it and think you spent a fortune at a high-end department store. And they're going to think that it's a high-end high -end designer garment. There we go. Okay, we have two more flowers to go. Let's go to the next one here. Once you get into a rhythm, it's really relaxing. And I can see on my spool of thread that I'm almost out of thread, so I may have to stop it and re-thread. I'm watching my spool of thread. I'm probably going to run out. And I'll end up with one thread in here. So I'll probably have to stop this video and re-thread because my spool is almost empty. But I think I can finish this one flower. I think I'll have enough to finish this one flower. Oh, I also want to tell you, um, for you, all of you, uh, you know, if your machine has a pressure dial or a button on the top of your machine to control the pressure of this foot, release it. If you, on your computerized sewing machine, go into the embroidery mode for free motion and, and make sure you have it on the highest number because we're building up so much thread here that you want to have enough space for this to go underneath the foot, okay? See, maybe I can get enough, uh, have enough on that spool of thread to finish this tiny little one. We'll see. Here we go. You can imagine how much thread I go through. I'm sure many of you have seen pictures of my thread collection, of all my metallic threads. You know, when you're using real creative type notions, it really makes your sewing more enjoyable and more creative. Don't be afraid to step out of the box, my friends. You know? Tradition is great, but tradition was created because that's what they had at the time. We've got so much more today that you can do so much more. Yes, I'm going to make it. I have enough thread on my spool. Okay. Alright, so there she goes. Take that out, pull it out. It's absolutely beautiful. Now it's time for some close-up shots.